Hi there, I'm Dan Walleen, a cloud advocate at Microsoft, and in a previous video I showed you how to get started with Azure Static Web Apps. We're going to build on that in this video, and I'm going to show you how to get that app that's hosted in Azure into Microsoft Teams as something called a personal tab. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, first off, context shifting. You know, users are working in Teams a lot, but then they might jump to your app and back and forth and back and forth. So the less context shifting we can have for our users, the more efficient they're going to be. Now, in addition to that, there's other great collaboration features you can add and other tie-ins to Teams that make your users just productive in general. I'm not going to show that in this video, but I will show you how to get started creating this personal tab. Now, as a quick review, Azure Static Web Apps can host Angular, React, Vue, Svelte, and other static web apps up in Azure, and then they provide a way to link it to a GitHub repository. So you're going to notice here, this is my Azure Static Web App resource. I have a source of my main branch on GitHub. And if I go to that, there's a workflows. Now that's a YAML file they add, and that generates what's called actions to automatically build, in this case, a React app. So anytime a merge comes in, whether it's a PR or directly to the branch, it will automatically kick this off. And here's an example of one of the builds. Notice that we can get all the details each step, go to build and deploy, and we can even see all the commands that were run to do this build. Now, what I did in that last video was I did create React app, just took a regular app out of the box and got this all running, pushed it up to GitHub, and then created this resource here. And this is the app. The only thing I changed was I actually changed the title. That's about it. So a pretty boring app. But we're going to get this app into Microsoft Teams just with a few clicks, actually, a little bit of typing. So you don't even have to write any official code to do what I'm going to show you. Now, to do this, I'm going to grab this URL because we're going to want that, of course. And we're going to run over to Teams. Now, I'm running the browser-based version, but you could certainly do the desktop version or the mobile as well. And the first thing we need is kind of an understanding of how does this work then? Like if you have a web app, do you install it into Teams like you do with iPhone apps or Android apps? And the answer is no. Teams is literally just an app that has iframes that link to where you host your apps. So getting your app into Teams is actually pretty straightforward depending on what you want to do. Now we need to create what's called a manifest file, a JSON file to make this work. And in order to do that, I'd either A, have to type it, or B, maybe use some tools that are out there. There's an extension for VS Code, for an example. You could use Yo Teams, which is a Yeoman generator. Or you could do a really simple way. And I'm going to show you that here. So I'm going to come down to our little dot, dot, dot ellipsis icon, and I'm going to type App Studio. And once I install this and add it, I'll have the ability to very easily create a Teams app. And this would be what we call a tab. So I can create new app, I could manage bots, or I could even import an existing app. Now, I want to emphasize it's not importing like all your app code. It would be importing a zip file that would have this JSON file in it and some other assets possibly, like images and things like that. Now, I'm going to create a new one, though, from scratch here. And the first thing we're going to do is just give it a short name, and then you can give it a full name if you want, but that's not required. And then I'm going to give it an app ID, and I'm just going to hit generate. This will go into a manifest, which I'm going to show you in just a moment here. We can also give it a package name. Now, normally it kind of follows the pattern they show you uh, right here, but I'm just going to do a real simple one. Give it a version. This is definitely not a 1.0, but hey, we'll go with it. Uh, description. Uh, full description, you know, my first Teams app or something like that. And then what's my company, Contoso. And for the website, I'm just going to put the website we have. Now, this is optional, this partner network ID, so we're going to skip that. But they do want you to put a privacy statement because this is, especially from an end user standpoint, what feels like an app. And so they might want to know about privacy. I don't have that because it's a React app, but you might have like a privacy or privacy.html, something like that. And then they also want a terms of use. Now I'm just going to default it to the home page of the React app. Finally, we can do some branding and some more advanced things, but for this particular app, that's really all we need. Now the next thing we're going to do is look at the manifest. So this is what it generated. 
right here. So all that info I've been entering went into this JSON file. So you'll notice there's my app ID, my package name, uh, my company, but there's nothing about these things called tabs yet, but we can fix that. So you'll notice off to the left, I can do tabs, bots, connectors, or message extensions. I'm just gonna do tabs in this video, and I can add one of two types. I could do a Teams tab. So we could install this app for the whole team that's set up in Microsoft Teams, or it could just be something a user could install as a personal tab. Now the personal tab is the easiest to get going. You don't really have to do anything at all as you're gonna see. Whereas with the team tab, I would need some configuration and we're not gonna cover that in this video. So we'll go with the more simple approach for this first one. So I'm gonna hit add here and we can give it a name like first tab app, give it a uh, entity ID. Now this is kind of like your app name, if you will, something unique to this app. That's not a great name, but we'll go with it. And then I'll go ahead and put in that URL. Uh, this one's optional, but I'll go ahead and put it in here and save. Now, a really important thing when you do this type of app for Teams is the domain that's used needs to be known. It needs to be kind of trusted, if you will. So if I go down to my domains and permissions, you're gonna notice that they automatically kind of plucked out my domain that I typed there and they put it in, and that's really important. But if you had other domains, you'd wanna add those. That way Teams knows about them. Now, the app manifest should now have, there we go, static tabs. This is gonna be this personal tab. Notice my content URL, okay? This is where the app is actually hosted. Now, in this case, I'm using Azure Static Web Apps because that works really well. Again, if you're doing Angular, React, Vue, something like that. But you can host it wherever you can get to. Make sure it's HTTPS, but other than that, as long as Teams can call it, then it's a valid option here. Now, the final thing is we need to install it. So we can do that right here. And what this will do is we need a zip file with that manifest inside of it, but App Studio will kind of do all that for us. I'm gonna install, and all right, so it looks good so far, so we're gonna say add. Now, in this particular example, I mentioned it's a personal tab, so that means there's our app now. Now, that's pretty cool. Now it's in Teams, and notice it also added an about here. Nothing real fancy, but it would link off to our same website, as you can see. But if we go on back here, let's go to files, and then notice it's gone. Well, if you've used Teams much, you'll know that you can click. If I want App Studio a lot, I can right-click and pin it. In this case, though, I just want my first Teams app. We'll pin it, we'll go back to it, and there we go. So that's how easy it is to get an app, in this case, hosted in Azure Static Web Apps. But it could be, again, hosted anywhere that Teams can call into. But that's how you can get that type of app in Teams. And now a user, especially if they pin this, they could be off chatting in their channel or whatever they're doing. And then come back to here and really easily get to your app. And you can even do things like single sign-on security and all kinds of other fun things to not only secure your app, but integrate it with Teams even more. So I hope that helps you out on at least getting started on kind of baby steps to get your app into Teams please hit subscribe and like and stay tuned for more videos.